So I'm going to talk about the esoteric side of things. You know, a lot of people get all spooked about it. Oh, it's spooky. Oh, they're talking about es the word esoteric. In actuality, everybody has an esoteric side. All your belief systems from your from your childhood, from your bloodline, from your your own belief systems, your culture. You, you believe certain things because it's inside, you know. Esoteric means inside. So the way you're acting on the outside is because of what you believe in the inside. Was Jesus esoteric? Yeah, he said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. He says, what defiles a man is not what goes in the body, but what comes out of the heart. Right? So, Jesus spoke deep spiritual truths, and the Bible's full of it. Full of uh, hidden knowledge. The Bible even says the gospel's hidden to those who are not saved. And they mock it, but those the, to those who are saved, it's a glorious thing. It's a blessing. It's a something to be talking about praiseworthy, you know. They're spiritually discerned. Those who are not saved are spiritually discerned. So the, the unsaved lost person hears a born-again Christian and thinks they're esoteric, you know. But all born again Christians say, "Hey, you should be able to know this. This is obvious. You're a sinner. If a Christian's talking about hell, that's esoteric. That's an unseen belief system. That's you believe it in your heart, you know. Because, and actually, when you really do a deep study, the esoteric is hidden in plain view. I'll give you an example. The Bible talks about hell, right?" A place where everything burns up, right? <clears throat> the wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn up, right? So when you take your trash out, you take your trash to the dump and you burn it. The wood, hay, and stubble. The gold, silver, precious stone is refined. It's all hidden in plain view. The, the same truth. As above, so below. What does that mean? You got a heaven, you got an earth. The heaven's the unseen. God created heaven and earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So <clears throat> heaven is projecting down in the earth plane to follow certain patterns. But the, the people who don't want to follow those patterns are the lost, the unsaved, the un initiated meaning the the people who are not born again now the devil he's going to try to trick people and and take the esoteric to to praise themselves worship themselves uh th they'll try to teach that jesus is a prophet but not god and stuff like that but only the born again christians are the true esoteric because we see that jesus is god we know the trinity we know eternal life we know it's faith alone we know it's a mystery. The Bible talks about mysteries. The mystery of Christ and His church. The type and shadow of a marriage. Pointing back to Christ and the church. There's a lot of mysteries mentioned in the Bible. That's the esto esoteric, unseen, hidden in plain view. When you look at a marriage, you're looking at Christ and the church. When you punch your 40-hour work week, punch card your clock when you log in for 40 hours that's your 40 years in the wilderness you know type and shadow labor the woman paul says i travail in birth birth pains till christ be formed in you birthed in you so the woman labors and travails in birth pains till the baby is birthed and so the esoteric is is really the Holy Spirit in you seeing things that the average person can't see because you're, you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Spirit of truth. 
And the esoteric always points back to Jesus, points back to the Bible, points back to the absolute truth. Oh, you're talking esoteric. You're talking the, you're talking stuff. I'm talking stuff that I can actually show in 3D to point to a 5D. Oh, you said the word archetype. Yeah, I said the word archetype because everything is an archetype. When you see past all the archetypes, you see past time. There's nothing new. If you read the book of Proverbs, it talks about the scorner. If you study the scorner, you can actually see them when they try to get into your world, you know. And so you have hidden knowledge. Because you've studied uh, Proverbs and Psalms. And you know the scorner. And you know all their patterns. When you study Jezebel, that's esoteric knowledge. You know how Jezebel acts and works. When you study the legalist, you have esoteric knowledge because you know how all the legalists talk. They all talk the same talk because it's an archetype. When you st that's what types and shadows are. That's the esoteric realm. It's nothing to the born again. It shouldn't be scary or mysterious or uh, spooky or anything like that. It's just... Jesus walked around and everything he spoke, when he spoke in a parable, he was giving you hidden knowledge that it, you need the Holy Spirit to hear it, you know. It's really simple, people. So when you look at the color red, that ought to tell you that represents the blood. When you look at the color blue, it ought to, ought to tell you that represents the law. And you might say, how is that? Blue in the Old Testament, God told Israel to put blue fringes on their garments to remind them of the law. That's esoteric. Well, that's what the Bible, that's what God said in the Old Testament. Blue represents the law. God said that in the Old Testament. Look it up. Keep the blue on the fringes because that represents the law. The rabbis are esoteric. The Bible's esoteric. It's hidden knowledge. Only to the initiated. Who are the initiated? The born again. You must be born again. Receive Christ into your heart by faith. Where does it say that? It's all over the place. You just have to see it. You can't see it until you see it. Until God enlightens your mind and your spirit and your heart. Some things you can't see because you're not going to the source. And the source is who? God. How do you get to God? Through Jesus. There's only one way. And when you say Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, that's esoteric knowledge. What does that mean? How can Jesus be the way, the truth, and the life? Because He is eternal life. And the Bible says, and Jesus says, drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. Don't you think that's esoteric? Drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. He, is He talking about literally? No, He's giving you a He's given, it is literal, but it's spiritual and it's figurative and it's allegorical and it's esoteric. It's all the above. Drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. What's he saying? Take on my nature. Eat of that eternal life, not the, not the uh, natural world. The natural realm is the snake eating itself. You can eat of the earth and still die and go to hell. People eat of the earth plane and they still die. But when you eat of the spiritual plane, you live forever. Drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. He says, does that offend you? Are you going to walk away? What does that mean? Most of the preachers don't even talk about it. Drink of my blood. Does that mean go to the Catholic Church and it's not really about what you see. You go, you go and uh, you have communion in the church, right? They eat some bread and drink some wine or some grapefruit fruit, fruit juice or whatever. It's a typology. You know, people go to church to worship. Jesus says there'll be a time when people worship in spirit and truth. It's not a place. You don't have to go to a place to worship. Because you you are the church. You are the vessel. You are a temple. Your body's a tent. It's a, it's a temporary place down here. 
And so my point is, the Bible is full of esoteric truth, but people run from it because they can't understand it. And it sounds spooky. Oh, it's like a ghost. You don't know what a ghost is. Actually, I decoded what a ghost is. A ghost is just a, a holographic projection of something in the past or a memory or some kind of experience. It's, it's, not, even, it's not even real. It's a phantom. It's, it's not real. Your experience down here is not even real. You're seated in the heavenlies. Yeah, it's real. But it creates a memory down here. You're actually, everything that you do is creating a memory in this place and it reflects back. If you pay attention to your thoughts, you'll see it. But you're, most people are so distracted, they can't, they got so much noise, they can't see it. So be still and know that I am, right? So if you start to be still, you'll start to see deep spiritual things, but most people can't be still. And it's a lot of it's the problem with the the devil system. The drama is trying to upset people and keep people all mixed up. Be still and know that I am. One way you can be still is to uh, cut off the noise. The truth about hell is esoteric. The average person doesn't believe in hell. The truth about your sin, your born in sin, is esoteric. It's Most people are not willing to accept that. Only the saved people understand it. When you start to get saved, God has to show you your sin. And you start to see your sin and you, you realize you're going to hell. There's a lot of people that have they claim to be saved, but they never saw their sin. It's just like... It's like some kind of, uh, just some kind of word that comes out of their mouth where, yeah, I'm a sinner, but they never really fell down on their face and saw how sinful they really were. They never fell down and said, and cried out, Lord, save me, I'm a sinner, you know, like the, the thief on the cross, you know. I don't deserve to be saved. And that's when God reaches down. Lord, save me. I don't deserve it, but please save me. That's when He reaches down. I believe on Your Son. I've received Christ. I know that there's only one way. So, there's so many esoteric stuff, uh, parables that are in the Bible and truths that uh, all you have to do is read Psalms and Proverbs and Isaiah and and listen to the parables that Jesus spoke and Apostle Paul said, "I should behold, I should." Behold, I'll show you a great mystery. There's a lot of mysteries in the Bible. The number seven means completion. That's a mystery. Why does number seven mean it? completion? Because God on the seventh day rested. The number three is the Trinity. The numbers have esoteric meanings. based on the Bible. It doesn't have to be spooky unless you're dealing with the devil, unless you're not saved. You know, the people who try to learn the esoteric knowledge without being saved, yeah, it's going to be spooky for them because they're going to run across a demon. They're going to run, run across the devils and the demons and the, the dark side. But when you're on the light side and you see esoteric truth, it all points to what Jesus did at the cross, you know. Drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. If that's not esoteric, I don't know what it is. What's he saying? If Jesus is eternal life, what's he saying? He's not actually saying, uh, uh, actually a physical thing here he's talking about taking on his nature is the servant greater than the master you will be persecuted 
You will be mocked. You will be lied about. You will be called every name in the book. I mean, think about everything they said about Jesus. They're going to say it about you. And it's not even true. Think about all the movies that were mocking Jesus they wrote, you know. Why would they mock Jesus? Why would they make movies about Jesus? Why do they focus on you? Why are they so, uh, what's the word, obsessed with you and what you're doing? Don't they have a life? Notice the people who persecute you and chase you down and follow you and stalk you and try to stop you and all that. Don't they have their own life? You, this is a, That's an evil spirit. I saw an Instagram post about that recently where somebody said, if a person is stalking you and chasing you and attacking you and, and just keeps going, that person is, has a mental illness. They're mental. They're mental. Something's wrong. They just keep... They, it's just like w Wiley Cody. Wiley Cody has a mental problem. What are they doing? Why are they chasing you? They know you have the spirit of truth. They know you have, you have the Holy Spirit. So they want that eternal life because they're doing it in the energy of the flesh. They're, they're trying to, to connect with something that's spiritual in the energy of the flesh, which turns into persecution because the spirit mind is counterintuitive to the flesh mind. So when they come, they might even intend for goodness in their heart. But because they're in the flesh mind, they ha it, re it flips, the, sc the script flips, and they can't help it. They have to say something evil. They have to make up lies, or they have to believe a lie. It's kind of like what, what they tell you about a judge. You know, when you take a matter before a judge, the judge listens to all parties. But most people only listen to one side. That's when, when you mature to the next level, Let's say you're at work or in a family situation or something online or some news, and somebody says, such and such did this, or such and such is this, or such and such was that. Okay, so a little child believes that. But somebody who's matured says, okay, what is really the truth? And they look at the other side, they look at the history, they look at the, they come to their own conclusion, not based on what one person says. If they say, the apostle, you know, I had an aunt one time, the apostle Paul hates women. I don't read apostle. What? A, wait, what? Apostle Paul wrote the rest of the New Testament. He doesn't hate women. He's showing you a type and shadow of Christ and the church. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Wives, submit as unto the Lord. He don't hate women. She just has a Jezebel spirit. Only the only people who think that Apostle Paul hates women are the Jezebels. Those are the only people. They don't believe they actually hate authority. Usually these people hate authority. If you believe that the Apostle Paul hates women, that means you probably hate authority in your life and you probably can't keep a job and you can't keep a marriage. Because you're running from authority. You hate authority. Most women hate authority in this society unless they have been saved and born again and God humbled them just like a man. Most men hate authority till God humbles them. I mean, nobody likes the authority of a human who has faults, but you know that God works through authority. Even with a narcissistic, evil authority figure, your your the way to the way to overcome that is pray and see what God is teaching you through that situation, you know. Ask God to reveal what's going on. I just took a paper towel and cleaned off a shelf and the dust was ridiculous. And so that in itself is an esoteric truth. Where does dust come from in a closed 
off house or closed off system. Where does that dust come from? How's that even possible? I haven't decoded that anyway, or but think about just think about how can dust just appear on a shelf in a house that's closed off, you know? Where's that dust coming from? <laughs> really? Somebody needs to study it, do some deep study on that. But math is esoteric. You know, if you take some math classes and you study Pythagorean's theorem and stuff like that, it's esoteric. And then, you, like, like, once you take math and you learn the 3, 4, 5 rule and all that, and then you go work with a carpenter, and the carpenter says, do the 3, 4, 5 rule. And you say, you know where that's coming from? They said, no, I know it works, though. That's Pythagorean theorem. And they said, what's that? See, you've been initiated because you, you have a math degree or you studied math in the 3, 4, 5 rule is Pythagorean's theorem. You've been initiated. You can actually do the proof, but a carpenter doesn't understand that. But to, to him, it sounds like you're talking magic, but he knows it works, so he uses it. And so that's what most people are doing when they go to church. They know this works. If they do right, if they uh, follow certain patterns, the investors, they know it works. They don't know why it works, but they know it works. Once you see the sine wave and everything, you, you, you can learn how to invest. Everything runs on a cycle. And you might say, well, why is everything on a cycle? Because it's a birthing process. It's a birthing system. Everything in front of you is a birthing system. Even to understand the esoteric, unseen truth, it's a birthing process. And you have to be serious about it, and you, don't have, you can't give up. It's going to be frustrating. You're trying to see something deep in the spirit realm, and it's going to be frustrating because it's not common knowledge. It's not natural knowledge. It's supernatural and so when you see this supernatural realm, the supernatural truth of the hidden in plain view, the, the, the truth is hidden in plain view. And everything that you touch, everything that you see, every word you speak, there's deeper meaning in everything. So to understand the esoteric, is to see types and shadows of the unseen in the seen. When you can see types and shadows of the unseen via the seen, that's because you're not from here anymore. Now, the demonic side is going to see types and shadows that point to the Antichrist, and they're going to look for a matray and all that. Instead of seeing it in Jesus, they're going to see it in mankind. And that's what the 666 is about. The world is looking for a savior in the natural. The 666, Therion Beast, Revelation talks about it. Mankind is looking for a savior, which Jesus already made a way of escape before the foundation of the world. So the very thing that they're looking for has already been. It's already happened. They just can't see it because their heart is blind. And so when you see somebody who has a dark heart, they're blind. The truth is right there, but because their heart's not right, they can't see it. When you point your finger and say, look, it's right here. Jesus is being preached right here, right now. Can you see it? And they say, no. Look on your door. There's a cross on your door. Jesus is the door. The peephole's in the middle of the door, the heart of the door. You can't see if your heart's not right. The, the cross is right there on your front door. Can you see it? And they say, no. It's like, wow. Like, you cross your fingers. You cross your arms. Cross your legs. It crosses your mind. You go across the street. You cross with your neighbor. Everything that you say is the cross. The back, every time you think it's going, it's cross. Every time you move your body, it's crossing. Everything is the cross. Crisscross. Crossword puzzle. The puzzle of life is the cross and the word. That's why they call it crossword puzzles. 
It's hidden in plain view. It's right there. It's not hard. It's not complicated. But you're trying to figure it out according to, to what man is teaching you. Unsaved, hell-bound sinners trying to teach you something. And they don't even know anything. And it's so simple a child could get it. That's what blows your mind. <laughs> it's so simple. But man wants to make it complicated. It's wild stuff.